The Greek Greys in Marvel Strike Force are outdated and have been for years. Is a Greek grade overhaul coming very soon? We're discussing that in this video. Where have the villains gone in Marvel Strike Force? We have had exactly zero villains released in Marvel Strike Force in all of 2021. What is going on with that? We're addressing that in this video. And who is going to be included in the Valley Flying version of the A-Force? I'm making my picks in this video and answering the rest of your questions from the mailbag section of the Discord. And if you're ready for all of that, guys, find that like button. And let's go smash it! Valley Flying. Welcome back to the channel. I am Valley Flying. I hope you had a great weekend. And if you're in the US, I hope you had a great 4th of July. If you're not in the US, I hope you had a great Sunday. But it is Monday. It is time for the mailbag. It is time to answer your questions, mainly about Marvel Strike Force. But you guys did include a few Marvel Future Revolution questions in there as well. So we'll be answering those. And if you have not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe for more great future fight content or future revolution content and strike force content, obviously. And uh, on my second channel, Valley Flying 76, we are posting some gameplay footage of there. And eventually we'll start to move all the future revolution content onto that second channel, but we're still covering it on this channel for now, guys. Uh, and we also have a sponsor, new sponsor. Now we've been sponsored by uh, Blue Stacks for a while, guys, but for me, uh, Future Revolution doesn't work as well on Bluestacks, works a little better on LD players. So we got both uh, emulators down there with affiliate links. If you wanna use one or the other, if one works a little better for you, then obviously use that one. For me, Strike Force works a little better on Bluestacks. Future Rev works a little better on LD player. And we got both options there for you guys now. But without further ado, Let's talk about these Greek raids. What is going on with them? Now, normally I don't talk about Reddit unless there is a Cerebro response. And Cerebro did respond to this uh, question about the Greek raids posted by Rocket Rifle. Thank you for posting this. Uh, can we please get an overhaul of the Greek raids is what it says. I've been playing this game since May of 2018 and all three Greek raids are almost exactly the same as they've always been. Yeah, they haven't been much updates to the Greek raids since they were released. Uh, and they weren't they weren't here all three years, but they've, they've been uh, ever ever since they were released. They're not they've been changes to them. The orbs are total garbage. Yeah, for most for most players that have been playing for a little while, there's not much value in the orbs. The newest characters in there is Shatterstar. How did Longshot not even get added with him? I understand newer players need a lot of the other characters, so why not mix it up depending on the difficulty you're completing? That makes so much sense. I mean, just I mean, how long did it take this person to uh, write this post? Probably not that much time, but I, I don't know why the folks over at Scopely or Boundless didn't uh, think of something like this. Yeah, make a different orb depending where you're at, uh, unless they just don't want to, unless unless that would be too friendly for the players and not getting that frustration mechanics for the players. So they there may be purposefully uh, not including some good characters, but why wouldn't they just, just make it a little friendly? Give us some more reason other than just some uh, gear orbs to uh, wanna push hard in these raids all right uh as far as rewards i mean there's 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 that fun factor as well but they had added the slatter which didn't actually change anything in terms of enemies the raids are general uh raids in general are totally stagnant but it's simply auto fiesta that 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 is true for a lot of the difficulties of the raids maybe not every single difficulty of the doom raids maybe not every single difficulty of these greek raids but they they are pretty stale the trade requirements for a gamma are pretty outdated now i mean when was the last time we've had a new trait added i know they did something with the pim tech uh when that team was added but just one trait in all three raids and that was for i don't know years of raids it's, it's they're very very outdated i generally think there's a in joke amongst the devs and how many more times in gamma comes around with the same old trash it's pretty trash it's pretty trash but cerebral like i said did respond uh yes they're a tad still. I think I think a tad still is an understatement. I think Cerebro is being nice in this statement. I brought this up to the team, and they're gonna review the Greek raids sometime in the near future. Oh man, I wish, I wish, I wish this was a little more specific because they're so stale. I'll keep on top of it and ensure that it doesn't stall out. And I, I appreciate that. But yeah, they're they're pretty stale right now. <laughs> but that is, they are what they are guys so let's 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 move on hopefully this does get addressed i think it's a little too soon Ooh, 
I think it's we're, we're, we will be, get to that A force, but I think it's a little too soon for them to address it in this uh, update happening this week. But maybe an update 5.6, 5.7, we will get some relief for these Greek grades. I, I am hoping that we're getting them sooner than later. But now it is time to get your questions from the Discord. And if you're not a member of the Discord and you want to leave a question for a potential future episode of the Monday Mailbag, make sure you uh, check out the link down below and uh, join the Valley Club on Discord. But boom, first question of the week. Yo, Valley Fine, it's heating up here in California. One can say it's hot as hell. Good thing I get a country club to go to. Uh, I, I, it, is that a reference to Hellfire Club or something? I'm not sure what the quotations are. But anyways, I'm uh, posting this right after your Monday mailbag from last week. That episode was fire. Ah, yes, it is. Hellfire Club. I get it. I get it. Yeah. All right. Uh, that, that didn't blow over my head. But anyways, cool about uh, onto that question. All right. Onto the question. Whatever happened to all the good villain teams? Doesn't it feel like it's been a while since we've had a great villain team? Yes. Yes, very much so. I mean, you would think it's about time they finished off her Marauders and give Emma her own team. I wonder if Boundless is about to dump a bunch of more mutants after all these three-person raid teams. So what's your thoughts? So uh, let's go look at the, what was released so far. And some of these date back to November of last year, like Yelena. I'm not sure the exact time of Red Guardian, but this is what we've had released this year. Hero, 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 all heroes until Bishop, all heroes until Multiple Man, all heroes until Philavel, and then it looks like even in update 5.5 .5, happening sometime this week, we're getting Sharon Carter, Sam Wilson, and another hero added to that secret Avenger. So yeah, we where have the villains gone? They're missing this year. All right, so as far as the question, why are they not adding Marauders? I think they're not adding a fifth member of their team to give flexibility. I think that's what they're doing with Secret Avengers on purpose. Uh, they're releasing them as a three-person team, and you could you could slot in the other two members. So uh, I guess that's a good thing. Right, here's the question. I, I, we're, we're, we're screwing up the screens here, guys. But yeah, I think they're doing that on purpose. So I don't know if there's going to be another member of the Marauders released. Uh, and hopefully for that flexibility. I, and maybe, maybe that's the intent that they have here. Uh, I think that is the intent of the Secret Avengers. They may be releasing more members down the road. But uh, yeah, I, I, I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing that they, we have incomplete teams. But... Yeah, where are the villains, Scopely? Uh, I, I think this just goes to show that there was no medium term or long term planning, and and ever since uh, ever since uh, Yelena, maybe maybe going back towards uh, beginning of December, but uh, hopefully hopefully with this uh, late 2021 uh, blog post uh, roadmap. We will get some insight, we will get some planning, and we will get uh, some kind of uh, medium and long-term plans for the direction of this game. Uh, that is my thoughts. Hopefully we got more villains, but I think I think the incomplete teams were done on purpose to give us more flexibility. I don't know if you remember in year one, there was no complete teams. It was all like uh, the synergizing and uh, theory crafting, putting teams together. Now now it's pretty cookie cutter. So I, I, I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing that they haven't released complete teams but yeah we need more villains we need more villains all right hey valley greetings from singapore greetings from texas brother the recent first ever mythic legendary event went live yeah i know you're you sound exotic, about as excited as i am for that mythic legendary event the event seems no different from a legendary event in any way except uh, ex i was expecting something special and uh different given that it's not a regular not given that it's not a regular legendary event but a mythic one do you know why Scopely is creating this as a mythic legendary event and not a normal one besides restricting us with a new ISO gear uh, besides that uh, to make more money but yeah it, it's basically new ISO 8 restrictions and new gear restrictions and so they can monetize these leg uh, mythic legendaries a little better not sure how how frequent these mythic legendaries will be compared to normal legendaries but it, it is totally based on monetization there's no difference other than uh, the kit and you could even argue that Adam Warai's kit is a little less less un, a little more underwhelming than some of the previous legendaries have been despite him being the first mythic legendary character he's not he's not stronger than some of our other legendaries it's just for the effects i mean it's just for the added requirements that's that's the only thing and they made it sound cool with the mythic and i've been very sarcastic about it. he's the mythic legendary character but yeah it's, it's just it's just extra requirements that's it that's it that's all it is valley i hope you and the girls are doing well thank you brother i hope i hope you're doing well and uh, your family is doing well as well wondering if you have any insight to something my alliance just encountered we're a level 80 guild in platinum one and just got completely cleared in under 12 hours by a level 60 alliance 
or in level 62 alliance with seven members who have cleared who with seven members cleared duty for something is fishy what is going on so once in a while and now I, I there there may be something fishy let's just uh say that 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 seems a little fishy with those members but once in a while uh this this may be legitimate and once in a while we do run into alliances that have very low collection powers seems we should just walk over them but we go into the rooms it's like they have all these meta teams they have uh infinity watch heroes for hire uh black order uh you know and, and more recent ones than the black order but they have these strong teams on defense they have strong teams on offense so it's like a lot of teams kind of sandbag on their other or a lot of alliances will sandbag on their other characters to get the lowest collection power total because i think back in the day that's that is how wars were determined or at least that was part of the equation they it still may be in the equation with the elo rankings but uh they wanted the collection power as low as possible and only focused on war characters war offense war defense and kind of neglecting their arena and raid team you may have ran into one of those there they're they're not very common but there are some alliances that just, just like war and don't really like the other game modes so you may you may have run into a sandbagging alliance or you may have run into a cheating alliance or Maybe they just spent a lot of cores and pushed hard. It's hard to determine what went on here without a little more information, but it may be legit. There may be some shenanigans at work, brother. Uh, Valley, greetings from South Wales. Greetings from Texas, brother. I was wondering what you think. I had an idea about Dark Dimension. I was thinking the devs could make a DD supply store where you could replay Dark Dimension to earn credits for a store. They put out gear 13, 14, 15 pieces in there. So you could build teams or uh, for GD4 from replaying Dark Dimension. Uh, that's it. Would love to know what people saw it on and keep it safe and keep on smashing. So the only negative against this is we've had bots employed in the past. Uh, and I think there's people that could just run this on auto with their characters. Uh, that, that one, two, and three. Maybe not four. I'm sure there's a few people that could auto Dark Dimension 4. There's certain characters that could auto Dark Dimension 4, but that would be the issue. If, if, if there's someone that could go in here into these and just go in and do this over and over and over and just accumulate these credits, it could be an issue. Now, if you limit it to maybe once per week or once per month or limit it like like we've been talking about with other things uh it, it could be a good thing you know as long as uh, we, people have time and there's enough time between uh when these reset maybe from patch to batch every patch maybe you get to replay each dark dimension uh and you could just throw that on auto or whatever do it whatever time you want and you get this currency credit that would be something cool because you're not just getting some minimal rewards you're kind of choosing the rewards so I kind of like this in conjunction with some time limits on it or some time restrictions on it where you can't just go replay this. But yeah, I, I would like the story. It would give you more flexibility in what, what rewards you would need based on your level. So it's a good idea. I, I would like it. Will the devs do it? I don't know. All right. I love following you over the past three years, being super positive Valley to not so positive Valley to super salty Valley, which is your favorite. I'm not sure which is my favorite. It kind of uh, goes up and down depending how I'm feeling that day. And uh, I'm, I'm a little more happy than a super salty valley too, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, yeah, I decided to leave the game. I can't take the power leaps and the monetary cost or being left behind method of Scopely. I hope MFR is uh, Marvel Future Revolution is awesome. I've already pre-ordered it and I hope the most of the MSF community does the same. It's a very different game. I've talked about that in yesterday's video. There's pluses and minuses to each game and I guess a lot of it will be a personal preference. But yeah, Marvel Future Revolution, personally, I, I like it a lot. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm actually enjoying it a lot better than Marvel Strike Force right now. In a couple weeks, I don't know where I'll be with each game, but I'm enjoying both of the games right now. Marvel Future Revolution a little better. Uh, there, there, you can you can play Future Revolution right now if you use an emulator, and you will need to use a VPN now. If you want to play Future Revolution, you don't need like the highest end VPN like I thought last week. You can get one of these free VPNs because actually all you need to run Future Revolution is to have that VPN going at the start. Then you could turn it off before you go to the load screen, turn the VPN off, and then run on your local network. So there's ways around it. You can play Future Revolution right now, but you will need to have an Android device that can be registered in Canada, either being either by being in Canada or through a VPN. But sorry, sorry to see you go about Marvel Strike Force. I get it though. I've I've been uh, upset for a little while with Strike Force, hoping things would turn around. 
Hopefully, we get more insight into the 2021 blog post. You, and Cerebro did say that they he's confident that they have a plan going forward. I'm not sure what plan that is. I'm not sure if it's a great plan that's very player friendly, if it's a great plan that's very scopely friendly, or if it's something in the middle. We will see, though. We'll see if uh, this game will be turned around. Uh, I think there's too much money at stake for it not to let me. All right. Why have they yet to fix the bugs that makes Toons weaker in Dark Dimension 4? What the heck is going on with it? I have an extremely difficult time with the last city node because of the huge power difference in my tunes. I cannot believe this is yet to be fixed. Seriously, I truly hope you highlight the question during your next show and make players aware. Also, why are you on voice not bugging the heck out of Boundless Scopely about this? I have picks if you want them. All right. So, yes, the picks. The picks do show a drop in power level in Dark Dimensions and in War. I think it's a visual bug. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a visual bug, though. I think all the nodes are the same. I'm thinking when you get in there with your uh, tunes, it's all the same. I've heard conflicting reports, but I think I've heard more reports that it is just a visual bug. Nothing confirmed by Cerebro, though, or or at least nothing that I'm aware of that I'm confirmed by Cerebro. There may have been something that he said in the Envoy chat that I was not aware of, but I, I'm pretty sure it's just a visual bug. That's why uh, people aren't making as much of us think about it. But yeah, I, I don't have I don't have too much uh, evidence either way other than other than when you look at the score the power levels of your characters in in that you take into each node it looks it's a little different but other than that i, I don't have a lot of uh, evidence either way but mo more people are saying that it's a visual bug than not so i'm i'm just, just gonna assume that it's a visual bug unless unless i see evidence that says otherwise all right, next question. Let's say you run an Infinity Watch without Adam Warlock in the fifth spot. Say you run Sinister. What is the best person to clone against a full Infinity Watch squad? All right, so I like this as a theory crafting question. I don't know if it would work in practice. Sinister, I think, is a little too slow. If you go into real-time arena with this, the other Infinity Watch is just going to kill your Sinister. And if you go into arena, maybe they won't kill Sinister. Maybe the speed won't make that much of a difference. But if the AI targets Sinister he's not going to get a chance to clone. They're going to kill him before he does a clone. So this may be, this may be a moot question, but let, for the sake of uh, fun, let's say, let's look into this. So Adam Warlock to complete the team. I think that's a great option. A second empowered Gamora. I think this will de be determined by the power of your sinister though. The answer to this question. Adam Warlock, if you're just looking for a kit, he's going to give them more health. He's going to give them those safeguards. So Adam Warlock, if you have a weak Sinister, maybe the way to go. If you have a strong Sinister, Gamora, Nebula, or even Phylavel may be a good pick. Because I'm not sure how the passive works. If if you're getting extra drain by having two Phylavels on the team, Phylavel may be the way to go. If you're getting uh, extra, um, extra assists from Nebula, so you're getting a lot of those assists. Uh, the percent is only is only three percent though. It doesn't go up to ten percent with that T4. So, uh, yeah. So it, the Nebula may be the way to go if you're getting a bunch of extra assists with her. Go more just for that power. So, bunch of different options, and I think it will be based on your sinister level but i think i think i would want to try as far as an experiment if i saw this in real time arena i would i would want to go with nebula that's what i'm thinking off the top of my head but uh yeah don't don't sleep on adam morlock don't sleep on phylovo and then gamora is another obvious pick as well so i think i think i would i would test them in this order nebula then gamora then i want to see if they're getting double drain from phylovo if they're getting double drain from phylovo that may be worth it. I don't know if that's going to be better than the double assists from Nebula. And then Adam Warlock, I think that would be a better choice if you have a weak Sinister, because then you're going to get a weak Adam Warlock. And then it's just mainly based on his kit rather than their actual stats. So that's my answer. I haven't tested it, and I am not sure if uh, Sinister's fast enough to actually make this work in practice. All right, Valley, is not about time for a new character to be added to a Blitz Orb? No, I, I would say a new character added to a Blitz store. I, I like a lot of characters added to a Blitz store. I don't, I don't want more characters than that Blitz orb, or at least Blitz orb exclusive. I think, I think we could forget about the orb exclusive characters. Uh, Prima more exclusive characters, Blitz orb exclusive characters. Forget about all of them. Just add them to the store. <laughs> all right, but for arguments, like, let's continue with the question. Maybe, maybe call now that Black Order has been taken out of the meta. Uh, could be a good catch up mechanic. It could be. I think a better catch up mechanic would be just adding Cole straight to the Blitz store and also including him in that orb. But I think, 
you know, better character, you know, maybe one of the Infinity Watch characters. That would be a better catch-up mechanic. I think um, if I had to pick one of either Phylavel or Moondragon, I think Phylavel is the champ there. So I would rather see her added. People, uh, newer players, they could get Gamora, Nebula, and Phylavel put together a good three-piece team. I think that would be the way if, if it was up to me as far as catch-up mechanic. Now, it may be too strong. It may be way too strong for someone new to get that character. Uh, it, it may not work. You may not have a lot of different teams that uh, this that this gives options to, but uh, that, that's probably who I would pick. I think Cole's fallen out. Cole's not a great standalone character. Uh, and Black Order, I don't know if that should be where you should be putting your resources now that we have in the Infinity Watch. So... Uh, I would I would go Phylavel. Uh, that's that's who my pick would be. But and it would be Blitz Store, not just Blitz Orb. Uh, but Blitz Orb would be better than nothing. If if you your choice between Blitz Orb and nothing, I'd rather have Blitz Orb. But I'd rather have Blitz Store over Blitz Orb. All right. Uh, but I think everybody everybody is there. Uh, would I be silly to uh, to hidden threat resources on all purple, hunting for a advanced Prometheum for Gamora? It's unfarmable. So. No, you're not silly. Uh, the, these they, were, they designed three orbs to so that you could choose which one would be better for what you need in the game based on your levels. So if we go into game, take a look at actually what you're missing out on. Uh, we see we got the orange, we got the purple, and the blue. Obviously, whatever, whatever wherever you are in the game and whichever orb is going to get you the most benefit, uh, that was what you should open. Now, I think long term, the orange one will be will give you the most benefit. You're getting. Uh, you're getting a gold mega and training orb fragments here. You're getting them in all of them actually You're getting these level 5 elites and level 4 elites in this one and then in the center pillar all this other reward You're getting t4 fragments, but uh, other than that is just the gear uh, With this purple orb you're getting pretty much the same thing. You're getting a 4 and 5 uh, options you're getting mega training and uh, gold orb fragments and then on that center pillar, you're getting these L3 training mats. I think that's what it is, T3 training mats. And then with the blue, you're, you're getting the blue training mats. So that's the main thing. Other than that is the gear. So if you need the gear more from the purple, that, that is the way to go for you, brother. It's, 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 not, uh, it's not what's best for everybody else. It's what's best for you. So make sure you make that correct decision for your account. All right. Uh, Valley. Thanks for all the awesome content. I have a Marvel Future Revolution question. So I seem to be the only person that get, can't get the game to work. No, no there's, there's some people that can't get the game to work. Sometimes it's a little tricky when we're dealing with different regions, and VPNs and stuff like that. Uh, I am hoping that you have many connections to someone who might know a solution for me. I'm getting the, this device only supports OpenGL 2 out of 3, which is not supported, only supports 3.1 message when trying to run Marvel Future Revolution on BlueStacks. I was getting the same one on BlueStacks as well. I didn't want to figure it out. I just I just went to LD player. So that may be the quick solutions. Maybe someone figured this out on BlueStacks. I know there was a few other content creators that were using BlueStacks over LD player. So yeah, if if, if LD player stuff for some reason doesn't work on your uh, on your computer, I guess we could try to figure this out. But I would I would just go blue, uh, LD player over that. There's a link. Both of them are affiliate links down below. You could use either one, whatever works better for you. But uh, for me. LD player was the one to go and and I didn't have to worry about uh, configuring all this stuff that said I've tried every fix worked uh Canadian VPM uh 64 bit blue stacks oh that's that's another uh important thing you need to run a 64 bit blue stacks or a 64 bit LD player if you want uh these this uh, Marvel future revolution to work I still can't I still can't get the message to go away it's affecting it's even affecting the content I watch I usually watch a ton of different MSF streamers but I'm avoiding all the MFR MFR content out of frustration a tad bit of jealousy all right so the, hopefully that helps brother hopefully you could get in uh LD player instead of blue stacks make sure you get the 64 bit version uh, the the link down below is an affiliate for blue uh, for LD player, but make sure it's a 64-bit version, or uh, it's not gonna run on uh, either of the emulators. So hopefully that helps, brother. Uh, next question, though. Greetings from Ohio. Thank you for your content. I hope you and your family had a have a good fourth. They they had a good fourth. I was home just making videos. They were they were in Florida uh, having a good time. But uh, I hope I hope they had a good fourth. I I, I didn't I didn't really celebrate. Though. I was just working. <laughs> I don't feel that it's okay to. All right, hold on, hold on. I gotta go back and read the question. Uh, but the force should we be up should we as a community be upset that the envoy group was uh was spoken to but the rest of the community was left out as far as where the game is headed and why and and what they are and what they are and aren't doing to fix things all right so 
I don't I don't think so. I mean, a lot of the times they'll they'll release information to smaller groups and then release it to, to test it, see how the smaller group will react and then announce things to the bigger group. So I think that's what they are trying to do here. Get feedback, get uh, responses and just communicate what the direction is right now. I mean, if you if, even if you look at Marvel Future Revolution, that's what they're doing by only releasing things in Canada. So get to test things on a smaller scale, address things quicker when it's in a smaller scale, uh, look at feedback and then release it to a more larger scale audience. So I think that's what uh, Scopely was doing with uh, testing, testing some information that they're looking at for the envoys, asking questions, getting feedback. And then and then when they know what they're gonna do, then they'll, they'll release it to the public. Now, honestly, I, I gotta be careful what I say here, but I don't know too much. There's not too much that's under NDA that I know that I'm, that I'm keeping from you guys, so. Uh, Hopefully that lets you know exactly what I know in there without without revealing exactly what was said. But yeah, I, I, there's not that much that's under NDA right now. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. All right. Uh, hey, Valley, I hope you and the little buddies have a smashing good time over the 4th of July weekend. I, I hope they did as well. I, I, I like working. I was just working, though. But anyway, that being said, are there any correspondence we can expect on the fandom stealth bugs that are occurring on Moondragon and Adam Warlock in RTA to be resolved? I know the bugs. I know the devs like these bugs, but it's hard enough to try to win against. I rarely watch those bugs even more. So I think I think uh, the bug you're talking about, and, and there, there's a few different issues with this team, but I think the ones you're talking about, they did have a hot fix. This was, uh, this was from a few days ago. I know they released the hot fix uh, last week sometime. I'm not sure if this was before or after you asked your question uh there's been a lot of chat in the envoy servers about bugs with uh moon drag and things like that so i think this has it may have been fixed if it's not i'm hoping that uh, a lot of bugs with infinity watch gets fixed in update 5.5 that's coming this week so hopefully but the devs know about it they've been they've been addressed in the envoy chat All right not really a mailbox or msf question but wanted to ask uh, for Marvel Future Revolution. Did they do something with the APK file? Can't download it from your link. It now says request update. I wonder if they just pulled it. Uh, I know that uh, Marvel Future Revolution was doing a few updates during the weekend. I'm not sure if that uh, had anything to do with the APK file. Uh, I'm gonna leave the link to APK Pure down in the description. That's where I got my Marvel Future Revolution APK from. So uh, hopefully they update stuff and yeah, hopefully, hopefully it all works for you, brother. But I'll, I'll leave the link to the APK Pure uh, that I used, but there the may have been an update during the weekend. All right, Sam Wilson version of Captain America. Is it Falcon becoming this new tune, or will it be more like an original Spider-Man and symbiote Spider-Man? Uh, it's going to be two separate tunes. So like original Peter Parker version of Spider-Man will be the original version of Falcon, and then symbiote Spider-Man will kind of be like the Captain America version of Spider uh, of, of Falcon. So two separate tunes, two separate kits. Uh, they, they'll have the same name and very similar looks, but two totally separate characters. All right, greetings from SoCal, brother. I wanted to give you a fun hypothetical. I noticed there was a lot of uh, butt-kicking women in MSF. So my question to you is, what would Valley's A-Force include? You can play test fast and loose with villains and lore such as comic, MCU, and other media. So as long as they are playable in MSF, all right, so let, let's go back into the game and let's take a look at some of the characters that uh, I would pick for my A-Force. And the bonus question is, who's the sixth that isn't in the game? So uh, unfortunately, we don't have a female tag that we could uh, separate characters, but let's ask, like, for, for those of you that don't know who A-Force is, and, and before I was playing Marvel Future Fight a few years ago, I didn't know who they were either, but A-Force is a former ongoing comic book published by Marvel, debuted in 2015 as part of Marvel's Secret Wars crossover, and A-Force was described as being decidedly feminist, received favorable reviews from critics. The series, however, was canceled in October 2016 due to poor sales. And if we see some of the characters that are included in the real A-Force, She-Hulk, Medusa, we see Nico here, we see Dazzler, it looks like Storm, I think that's Rogue. I think this is Wasp. We see Spider-Woman, uh, Phoenix, Scarlet Witch. This looks like, I, this may be, I'm not sure, but is this Firestar from the Spider-Man and her Amazing Friends series? This looks like uh, Black Widow here, but so, and then Captain Marvel is obviously in this series. If we scroll down to see who is in the real series, at least according to Wikipedia, Captain Marvel, Medusa, uh, She-Hulk, Singularity, and Nico. And these were these were like the A-Force characters. They had an A-Force tag in Marvel Future Fight. So 
maybe maybe these characters will be coming to Marvel Strike Force. Uh, and too bad Marvel and She-Hulk wasn't a little better in Marvel Strike Force or had a different role. Dazzler and in Dazzler version of Thor. So that's who's in uh, the comics, at least according to Wikipedia. Now, if 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 this. It depends how you want me to pick this team. If we're just picking the best female team that we can make, we're gonna pick the four Infinity Watch females and Kestrel. That's the best female team in Marvel Strike Force right now. So I'm not gonna base it on their kits. I'm gonna base it on their characters, uh, things I've seen in comics, things I've seen in MCU, and just characters that I want to fit together. So uh, no, no real consistency on how I'm picking the characters, but it's not based on kit. And it's not based on me thinking that these characters are going to be good if you pair them together, all right? So with that disclaimer out of the way, let's go look for some characters that I think I think I think we have to include She-Hulk. So if this is not based on her kit and she's not a uh, boring war defense character, I think we have to include She-Hulk because she seems like a pivotal part of that A-Force. Uh, I want to include Sif. I want to include Sif as well. I'm, I'm a big fan of Sif. In the comics and uh i don't know if it's okay to give spoilers for loki but uh sif sif's cool and it looks like she may be returning in thor love and thunder as well so i'm gonna pick sif uh she's not a very good character in marvel strike force right now so i would like her to get some love on this new uh valley version of the a force team another character that i want to be good is uh not yo 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 i want to yo is pretty good as well but i would like to see quake in this uh in my a force team as well uh, it never felt right, at least to me, that she was on the Inhumans team. I know she's an Inhuman in in the Agents of Shield. I was gonna say MCU, but I don't know if if, if Agents of Shield is technically in the MCU anymore. They might have been out of the MCU. I can't find her, but Quake would be added to that screen uh, to that uh, section as well. Colleen Wing. I I. I when she was released, I was like, I like that character model. I wanted them to do something a little more with that character model, but. Uh, she's a war defense character another war defense character so kind of boring so colleen wing i would want her to be on this team as well the valley a force and then last but not least because she's she's missing her vision uh scarlet witch uh and and that's mainly so we could see maybe some of her other costumes. As i, I want to see uh some mcu costumes in this not just the black and white costumes and then uh and if i had to pick somebody that's not in uh the game for the to, for the to finalize the sixth version of this I think I'm going to pick Medusa, not only because she's a real member of the A-Force, but I think that would be doing a few different things for Marvel Strike Force. Because uh, for me, it never really felt right that she was a, that they made a team with Inhumans that had some Earth characters and had some Moon characters. I would like to see the Moon Inhumans, so Medusa, Gorgon, and then you could take Quake and Yo-Yo off of that team and make either, put them either on a shield team or make a whole nother Earth-based Inhumans team. That's what I would want to see. I like these kind of weird questions that really don't affect the gameplay, but it's just uh, personal things that I could think about and uh, do some cool theory crafting type stuff. All right, uh, I'm working on getting my alliance ready for Doom Raids. Other than a required ISO level, are there power level recommendations for the team? Something I could give my alliance mates to shoot for. Uh, so I've noticed uh, with my characters, most of the ones that I'm in taking into Doom are at least about 130K and up. Most of them are about 150, but uh, some of the lower ones like Kestrel and Silver Surfer, just because of the lack of stars, they're about 130, 140 for those characters. So I would be shooting for that as far as a uh, power level for your characters. But other than that, I don't know if there's a, a real big uh, limit as far as what you need for your characters. I mean, the only requirements are those ISO 8s. Uh, but yeah, other than that, it's just uh, whatever you can theorycraft, brother. All right, and uh, what's up, bud? Completing our, my, all my RTA uh, milestones this month appears to be far behind than it has been in other months. Been five days left at this point than in previous months. I'm usually 100%. But I'm at 77 right now with five days left. Haven't I, I haven't changed anything, but I've but I've completed every objective since I come out. Uh, but somehow missing 20 milestones behind. Did they change something? Though so they didn't change something for this current season of the uh, milestones, but they did change something a few seasons ago. So if we look at what happened this season for this versions of Mojo's Mayhem, uh, the June 11th, they all they said they added was where is she? Uh, here it is. They added kitty pride to that they didn't mention any changes or anything like that so uh the next uh season seven of mojo's mayhem kicks on on june 11th kitty pride uh didn't say anything about changes but this one they did back on may 7th when they're talking about changes to strike pass uh they talked about this uh, big prizes uh daily objectives so this is where they change it back on this date so uh maybe maybe 
I don't know. Maybe something was different the last season. We significantly reduced the time necessary to complete your daily objectives. I don't think that's true, especially with the Infinity Watch. Along with the mark to make the objectives easier to complete by emphasizing KOs more, requiring a broader range of traits, affiliation, and origin gives you more options with, regret with regards to bringing battle. We've also... Uh, increase the focus on daily objectives by decreasing the amount of weekly objectives rewards for completing so there was a big change in the previous season but between this and the last season uh there wasn't a change but this really affected how much uh, rt you had to do on a daily basis and you couldn't just grind it out on a saturday or sunday like you could with previous seasons so uh not in this current season but last season they did make some changes so that's that's what uh, you may be experiencing right now, brother. And that is it for the mailbag, guys. I will see you guys next time. More future revolution, more Strikeforce content on this channel. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification bell. And over on the Valley Spotting 76 channel, which there is a link in the description, uh, doing daily gameplay for Marvel Future Revolution. So stick around. And then eventually, we're going to move all the Future Revolution content onto that channel uh, from this channel. That way, people that like Strikeforce can stick on this channel. People that like... Uh, future revolution can move to that channel and you guys can get whatever content you want and if you if you like both games you can just subscribe to both channels so that's the plan and i will see you guys then hopefully you guys can have a great week hopefully this update is good hopefully there's less game breaking bugs than there have been in the past hopefully they're at a minimum we know they're going to be there so it's not even a question but hopefully they're minimal and hopefully they don't break the game too much and i will see you guys tomorrow i'll see you tomorrow on the Va valley club uh hopefully there's another video coming out today on this channel if not there will be another video on the valley plan 76 channel give me a hulk fist bump before you go have a great week let's just cross our fingers for this update and before you go give me that hulk fist bump valley flying out